Hawa. Love to the family, love to the tribe, man. You know, it's all vibration, it's all the grid, it's all the energy. When you get down to it, you know, you're like, all right, well, how do I separate myth, mythos, from the actual reality? And there's nothing realer than your energy, your frequency, and your vibration. If you think there's something realer than that, then you are fully committed to this matrix, to this illusion, to this grid, this synthetic grid. What synthetic grid? Drop. I mean, we're we talking thought spell barrier. We're we talking something more recent. Which one? Which version of this thing? It seems to be multiple versions of this hijack of this energy synthetic Merkaba dimension tearing grid doing experimentations montauk experiments oh man well something's going on and everybody knows it they're seeing stuff you know all in the sky orbs everywhere so much is going on in the earth man love to uh i believe it's geo shifter um who dropped you know that you know the whole uh, no trees or no no forest on on flat earth drop man and that was a great one and uh you know also dropped that these earthquakes are happening around these root canal systems you know these are like the root canal system of these ancient trees you know that are going to sprout back up one day and now something's happening now in Laguna Baja California sir the Mexico seismogram shows a big rumble they're calling it the Yucatan Pulse. And I'm asking you, so-called Negro, do you At feel... Mountain Time 2017. Guys, we're seeing some strange movement down here at the Sierra de Laguna. Seismogram. We noticed some strange pulses over here at the seismogram in the northern Yucatan. I'm going to take you here first at de Laguna. Looks like there's an earthquake underway. There is not. There's something very unusual going on. It looks like there's an earthquake. Nope. But it's something going on. What's happening in the root system, the root canal, the crystal, the gold? In the ground down there in that part of the world. The seismo in the Yucatan, which is right here, right next to it, still picking up those strange pulses. Don't know what that means. We've seen anomalies on these things before in the past. The one up in uh, the Arctic Circle, or right at the edge of the Arctic Circle, at Tixi, Russia. That was the most unique I had ever seen. It was like it was picking up some sort of a uh, new frequency, a, a strange frequency. What? A new frequency? A strange frequency? Man, I mean, you got that drop about, you know, all this energy, all the waves that's been hitting the earth, man, across the plain. You tie that into with the Maya, we're talking about this wave, this new wave, what they're calling a golden age. And what they have misinterpreted as age is a race or a, a wave, a, an ancestry, a seed, a golden seed, a golden race, a golden tribe, a golden seed, not age. Seed, golden people, copper people, returning a golden age of golden Negroes, man. Oh, no, it's the worst fear. They fear the new frequency. Is it a new frequency or is it your ancient love song? Russia, that was the most unique I had ever seen. It was like it was picking up some sort of a uh, new frequency, a, a strange frequency. Wow inside the earth very very rare this is silicon obviously it's about the same strength um but it's not completely uniform so i don't know what we're leading up to here if anything at all but it's definitely not normal hmm. this here is not normal and it's the only seismogram that's doing it those spikes are very strong so that tells me that there is ground movement there in that area there's no doubt about it Right there, there's ground movement. So this area here uh, should be on alert for a possible earthquake. There's something going on geographically there. We've known, I've known for many weeks that this day was coming, or these weeks were coming, um, and it's in full swing right now. 
All eight <laughs> of nine planets are on the right-hand side of the sun, with the exception of Mars, which is over here by itself, the Lone Ranger. Mercury has fully... So we're looking at alignments of these so-called so -called isolated global bodies. All right, so don't fall into the hijack. All these on one side of the sun, yada, yada, yada. The sun is in its own circuit. All these energies are in their circuit around a firm, fixed, and immovable foundation, which is you. So they're all doing this celestial dance around you, trying to hijack you into thinking that it's only about Venus and Mercury and Jupiter. There's no such thing as a greater light, a greater barrier. And so all these angelic entities are doing a dance together. What's going on? Why are they grouping up? Wait past this line that I made here. So there are all eight on the right-hand side. Quake Watch, the 10th through the 20th. There are two dates that I've uh, chosen for a variety of reasons, and a lot of things have to happen. But the 16th, which is tomorrow, and the 19th are two dates that are more prominent than others for significant quakes on Earth. This right All right, well, you know. The 16th passed, but, you know, maybe the 19th, you know. But just look at this Yucatan situation. Something is going on. That's really the drop that we're getting out of it, man. You know, peace to uh, Mr. MBB333. We're just talking waves of frequency, man. But you can't talk frequency without talking the sound of creation. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to scroll through a couple of these... Um, couple of these drops here man i'm gonna get into the uh the you know before it was at&t it's just you know you're just talking bell or pack bell and they had bell laboratories and you know they did this these experiments man where they were trying to you know test out or measure out the sky or frequency and they they found that no matter where they pointed their antenna no matter where they went they kept picking up the same what they were calling interference now, they are calling it interference, and they measured it at a 7.23 centimeter wavelength. And this 7.23 was like static to them because, you know, their instrumentation, you know, was being interfered with. So what did they do? They boosted up their signal to now, you know, when you research, oh, what is the uh, wavelength that the Bell Laboratories, you know what I'm saying, uh, scientists, you know, you know, came up with. You know, most, most, you know, uh, run of the mill sites will say, you know, 7.35. It won't even say that they actually picked up 7.23. It will just say that, oh, they, they found that the sky, that this, um, that this measurement, this energy that they're using, the frequency that they're using, um, they, they, they found it to measure 7.35 as if they just found, oh yeah, cool. Here's this frequency, but they actually had to boost up to it. Which means what? Which means what, people? That if they had a interference, no matter where they pointed their antenna, they called it a, a horn antenna. No matter where they pointed it, they picked up the same frequency. Now, they call it the frequency of the cosmos, right? That's how these, these new ages call it. The cosmos, the universe cycles. We're talking creator, and we're talking the sound of creation, or the sound of your creator. We're talking about your frame and your shaper. We're talking about the wave you're swimming in. We're talking about drop nation. We're talking about 7.23, which is the equivalent of 432. And we're going to get to it. That we're tuning back into the harmony of the sound, of the phi, of the spiral, of the cochlea. Now let's get what happened, man, because... It appears you've been put in multiple synthetic grids. Renewed and renewed. But let's check out this one. And let's tie them all together now. The sound of creation. I know it's kind of small. You know, but you know, hey. You got the link. Pull it up. A hop to the tribe. A hop to the battle family. Man. It's a beautiful thing. You already know. Truly encouraging. Inspirational. Motivational manifesting uh, a hop to the family, a hop to all the tribe, man, let's go. 
So everything in our world is a wave form, some, sometimes called pattern, a wave pattern. Everything, people. It's not just what you see in the mirror. It's everything. It's you. You're a wave. What wave are you swimming in? What wave are you resisting? What wave are you accepting? Are you being hijacked? What energy? What wave form? Every ideology or religion or whatever is a wave form. And it, where is it leading you? What is that wave manifesting? Is it, is it bringing out the fact that your creator exists? That your creator has a seed? It, that your creator is tribal, has always been tribal, and your tribes here have been hijacked, or the tribes here have been hijacked, and that shit just don't fly with the creator. You don't just get over that, over that massacre. We don't just move on from that. No, 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 no. No, no. That's just not how it works. It's a wave, man. Everything in our world is a waveform, sometimes called pattern or sine wave, signature. Sine wave, S-I-N-E, is that your sin. If we break it down into energy, frequency, vibration, if you're in violation of sin, are you in violation of your sine wave signature? You have a signature, you have an image, you're in the image of your creator. Are you getting the picture that when you're in sin, you're in violation of the actual wave pattern, the wave form, you're in dis-ease, so your body is the manifestation of the disease. Sine wave, sin, you're in sin, you're in sign. Sign is time, space. Trapped in space and time, sign. Cosine, let's go. It's all an abstraction of you. It's very simple, energy, frequency, vibration. You got to just surf it, man, because it is you. It's not about how smart you are. I ain't smart. I don't like to read, fool. <laughs> but with you, man, it's all good, man. With you, it's all good. All right, man, let's go. So everything in our world is a waveform, sometimes called pattern or sine wave signature, or could even be seen as sound. Ah, oh, wow. Breath. All things, your bodies, what they're calling planets, plane. Absolutely everything are waveforms. If you choose this particular way of looking at reality and superimpose that view over the reality of the harmonics of music and aspect of sound, we can begin to talk about different dimensions, dimensions, realities, dimensions, sound, flow with me. Come on, this is for you. At the right time, this is for you. The dimensional levels are nothing but differing base rate wavelengths the only difference between this dimension and another is the length or of its basic waveform so if you're talking higher dimensions the only difference is the length of its basic waveform what happens when they start messing up your waveforms your 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 dis-ease your gmo how is it affecting your waveform it's just like a television or radio set. When you turn the dial, you pick up a different wavelength. Then you get a different image on your TV screen or a different station on your radio. It's exactly the same for dimensional levels. This universe. And by that, I mean all the stars and atoms going infinitely out and infinitely in forever has a base wavelength of about 7.8. Two three centimeters. Listen up, seven point two three centimeters. So everything in creation has a basic wavelength of seven point two three centimeters. Very important. You can pick any spot in this room and go infinitely in or out, infinitely in or infinitely out forever within this particular universe in a spiral in a spiritual sense. This 7.23 centimeter wavelength is the ohm, ohm. We're talking vibration, talking sound, the Hindu sound of the universe. Every aspect or every object of this universe produces a sound according to its construction. Each object makes a unique sound. If you average the sounds of all the objects in this universe, this third dimension, you would get the 7.23 centimeter wavelength. And it would be the true sound of um for this dimension. 
this wavelength is also the exact average distance between our eyes. <clears throat> All right, man, this ain't no play play. 7.23. The wavelength is also the exact average distance between our eyes from the center of one pupil to the other. That is, if you take 100 people and average them, it's also the exact average distance from the tip of our chins to the tip of our noses. So when you get into all that Da Vinci code and, you know what I'm saying, all that, uh, you know, Michelangelo paintings and all that stuff like that, it's using what they're calling sacred geometry, which is just, you know, the mathematics with the breakdown of the creator that they're abstracting. This is basic knowledge. This is not difficult stuff. This is basic drop. So the distance across our palms to the distance between our chakras or energy centers, to give a few more examples, this 7.23 centimeter length is located throughout our bodies in various ways because we are emerged within this particular universe and it is embedded within us or we are it. It was Bell Laboratories. Now we're getting into the juice. What, what did these guys do? What did they do with their experimentation? Let's go. Alkaline. Oh man, make sure y'all get that alkaline. Let the brother Uno, let the brother get into the root of it all. Say, man, put that pink Himalayan sea salt, man, in your distilled or filtered water, man. If you want, man, you can even add in a key, a key line, man. You know what I mean? But uh, keep uh, vibrating up, man, because it's all about the waveform. Love to Paco, man, with that King's Oil, man. Brother said he sold out already, man. Just put the site up. So we're going to link it to the drop shop, you know, this week. Uh, as soon as the brother sends me whatever the information he wants me, you know, to uh, link up there, man. And um, it's going to be up, man. So love to Paco, man. Everyone subscribe and give Paco some love, man. When we put it up in the drop shop, man, y'all make sure y'all... Y'all support it, man. You know what I'm saying? We'll go right to his site. Support it however you got to support the brother. Um, you know, this is the most high giving us a way out. You know what I'm saying? Using what's around us. You know what I mean? So the brother's making oils out out of, <laughs> his, you know, the uh, beautiful cedar trees and, and whatnot in this area. Um, he calls it the king's oil, man. Talking about that King Solomon, man. That Solomon seal. And we're getting the drive, man. So it's going to be so much coming from that and out of that, man, support and love to Paco, man. Let go, let go. Anybody else with dope products, man, email me, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. And I'll link all that in our uh, in our drop shop, man. Just like we built the library up, we'll build our shop up, man. So we're doing it ourselves. We're doing it virtual so we can connect. We're using this uh, medium, you know what I'm saying? We're not letting it use us, you know what I'm saying? We're using this, uh, you know, technology. We're not letting the technology use us. We get a few good men out of this, a few good sisters out of this, a few good connections out of this. We've used it to perfection without it using us. And that's what we're here for, man, to connect, to give you the skinny, no fat. And we're just talking to Bell Laboratories. Pack Bell, right? So the Bell Laboratories, it was Bell Laboratories that discovered this wavelength. So they discovered this 7.23. What happened? Not some spiritual person sitting in a cave somewhere. When they first put up the microwave system that went around the United States. Whoa. <laughs> Already, you got to know that somebody was doing some play play with energy, frequency, and vibration while you were asleep. <clears throat> now your ass is just waking up and you're like, you did what? A microwave what? With all this black budget, trillions of dollars, taxpayer money. So Bell Laboratories discovered this wavelength 7.23. Not some person in some cave. So this ain't coming from some you know esoteric thing. It's it was it's it's science, right? It's science. It's you know the, these major scientists that pick this stuff up. This is what we're abstracting from what they picked up. We're looking at day drop, like, all right? So what can we take? What do we need to know about this? When they first put up the microwave system that went around the United States and pulled 
the on switch. They found static in their system. So they put up a microwave system across the continent, a microwave system. And when they turn it on, they found static in their system. You see, Bell Laboratories just happened to pick for the system's sending frequency one slightly longer one slightly longer than seven centimeters. So they picked for their sending frequency, a frequency that's slightly longer than seven centimeters. Now, 7.23 is what the static is they're calling, they're picking up. So why they chose that wavelength, I don't know. They tried to find the static, looked through their equipment and tried everything they could. First, they thought it was coming from inside the earth. So. They don't know what's causing this so-called interference or static that's measuring at 7.23 is coming from wherever. It's coming from everywhere. First, they thought it was coming from inside the earth. Eventually, they looked into the heavens and found it. So they, oh, they, they found it coming from above and said, oh, no, it's coming from everywhere. So while this is your frequency, they said, oh, no. So that tells you right now. Right now, when you deal with all those that are in charge of, you know, hijacking your frequency to them, when it comes to the creator, it's, oh, no. When it comes to the frequency of the greater light, it's, oh, no, it's coming from everywhere. How wow. The secure breath is the water you're swimming in. And yes, it's coming from everywhere. So first they thought it was coming from inside the earth. Eventually they looked into the heavens and found it and said, Oh no, it's coming from everywhere. In order to get rid of the static, they did something that was as a nation and a planet that we as a nation and planet or plane are still suffering from. So they reacted to what they called static or interference, that is the Hawa, the frequency they're picking up everywhere. And they did something that we, as a nation, are suffering from today. They upped the power. Listen up, because you're getting this hijack energy today. And what are they doing with CERN? Just think of this as, you know what I'm saying, the, the prototype. Whatever they're doing with this, you know, other stuff, man. It's all stemming from energy, frequency, and vibration that they start experimenting on right here, right now. Bell Laboratories. So they up the power 50,000 times over what they would normally need so that they can bypass Hawa. They upped the power. 50,000 times over what they would normally need to create their synthetic Merkaba grid, microwave, wavelength, illusion, matrix. Get it? They need to create another reality, not the one, you know what I'm saying, that's already here at 7.23. They need to up it 50,000 times over what they normally would need, which created a very powerful field. Very powerful field. And this field is what is also being called a synthetic grid or an illusion or a matrix, a very powerful field so that the 7.23 centimeter wavelength coming from everywhere would not interfere so that they can spiritually go to and fro without the interference of Hawa. They had to up their energy, their microwaves, 50,000 times. And they created a very powerful field. Now look, for reasons such as the above, I believe that 7.23 centimeters is the wavelength of our universe, or Hawa, secure, secure breath. This third dimension. As you go up into dimensional levels, the wavelength gets shorter and shorter, 
with higher and higher energy. As you go down in dimensional levels, the wavelength gets longer and longer with lower and lower energy, more and more, di more, and more dense. Just as with the piano, there's a space between the notes so that when you hit one note, there's a very definite place where the next note is. Man, this is just musical how it works. In this waveform universe we exist in, there is a very definite place where the next dimension level exists. It's a specific wavelength relative to this one. So when people think you're crazy for comprehending that there's levels to this, that your hawa has to exist if we're just talking energy, frequency, and vibration, and that you are the seed or the image or the sequence or the wave of your creator. From the very beginning, you are the original wave. Now, let them call you crazy. If we're just talking energy, frequency, vibration, and we're talking 7.23 centimeters that they discovered, that their scientists picked up, so much so that they upped their equipment 50,000 times to avoid the interference of that which is natural, the natural law. Because <laughs> we are natural by law. Street fam. Real one. Get in these classrooms. Musicians. Music theorists. And physicists discovered long ago that there are places between the notes called overtones. So we're talking dimensions, right? Now think of it in terms of overtones. Between each step of the chromatic scale, there are 12 major overtones. And remember when we broke down at the 440 that they're pumping out of the radio, that the International Standards Organization and the British Standards Institute, the DSI, put in place since the 50s, all frequencies coming out in one, one, one measurement, 440. And this is clearly a disruptive, distracting, anxious vibration. It's causing chaos in your body, and your cochlea. It's ripping you apart. It's a frequency war. You're working out to it. You're waking up to it. You're driving to it. It's constantly, constantly being... You're getting your ass kicked 24-7. You're breathing in the ass kicking. The ass kicking is in your water, it's in your food, and it's in your music, it's in your sound. And you have to change all of the above to dodge the hijack, man. The hijack is not just a person, it's frequency. When you dodge a hijack, a hijack is bad frequency, it's negative vibration, it's, 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 it's disconnecting frequency, it's disharmonic frequency. That is a hijack. It's disharmonic frequency. And yes, it does manifest in people. Harmony is the wave. So when we talk chromatic scales and overtones, between each step of the chromatic scale, there are 12 major overtones. 440 hertz only hits 8 out of 12 of these overtones. It cuts off at the 8. So it misses the entire higher higher scale, higher level, beyond the barrier, right, Doth? Beyond the barrier, 440 hertz cuts you off right beneath the barrier. So since 1953, with through your music and your TV, they've cut you off from the energy above the barrier. Your chemtrails, they're spraying it, they're blocking it out. They won't even let your music tune you up. 8 out of 12 scales is all 440 gets. 432 hits the entire 12. So again, send us your joints, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. We'll get you set up with your private folder. You know what I mean? And that's how we're tuning, you know, your music up, doing our part, man, to make sure that you at least have a, a playlist or two that you like that's in 432. Get at us, man. You know, so... Musicians, music theorists, and physicists discovered long ago that there are places between the notes called overtones. Between each step of the chromatic scale, there are 12 major overtones. A group in California has discovered over 200 minor overtones between each note. So are these individual heavens? Are we talking about higher heavens, dimensions? If we show each note in the chromatic scale as a circle, we have 13 circles. Each one represents a white or black key, like a piano, and a shaded area or shaded circle at the end would be the 13th note that begins the next octave. We're only talking octaves. 
The black circle on this illustration represents the third dimension or our known universe and the fourth circle, the fourth dimension. The 12 major overtones between any two notes or dimensions are the replica of the larger pattern. It's holographic, holographic, holographic. If you carry it further between each overtone, you'll find another 12 overtones that replicate the whole pattern. It goes down and up literally forever, forever your creator creates. This is called a geometrical progression only in harmonics. If you continue to study it, you'll find that each of the unique musical scales that have been discovered produces a different octave of experience, more universes to explore, more octaves of experience. You've, you've probably heard people talk about the 144 dimensions and how the number 144 relates to other spiritual subjects. This is because there are 12 notes in an octave and 12 overtones between each note. 12 notes in an octave and 12 overtones or dimensions between each note. 12 times 12 is 144. 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 9. We're talking to 9. Dimensional levels between each octave. To be specific, there are 12 major dimensions and 132 minor dimensions within each octave. Though in truth, the progression goes on forever. This diagram represents one octave. The 13th note repeats. Then there's another octave above that one. That's an octave of universes below this and an octave above and it stretches on theoretically forever. So as big and infinite as the universe seems, which is just an illusion anyway, there are still an infinite number of other ways to express the one reality and each dimension is experimentally completely different from another. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, sometimes you, sometimes you just gotta, you know, fall flat. Fall flat on your face, bone. All right, man, so. I mean, there lies another octave above that one. There's an octave of universes below this and an octave above and stretches off there. Below, below, above, below, above, above. You keep hearing this above, below, and so as below, so is above. All that, we're talking about the musical notes, you're talking about the octave. Let's keep it rocking. So, ATT Bell Laboratories. Pull up all these links, man. I'm going to get this quickly. All right, company history, AT&T Bell Laboratories is research development arm of AT&T. The research and development arm of AT&T. So Bell Labs designs and develops all the systems and services required by its parent company, Conducts experiments for application to AT&T's manufacturing facilities. Hey, let's go down. So let's go right here. All right, so Bell Labs was contacted by the U.S. Navy in 1937. All right, all right, to develop research already initiated in the emerging field of radar technology what does this got to do with your matrix people between 1934 and 1937 the naval research laboratory and the u.s army signal corps had conducted experiments in the field of radio detection and ranging device bell labs involvement in the project Proved worthwhile in 1939, a facility demonstrated to the U.S. federal government and Navy officials a model radar instrument that accurately plotted the course of ships between New York and New Jersey. Impressed with the accuracy and reliability of the new government or new technology, the government awarded numerous contracts to the research facility. Now we're in the trillions of dollars, right? According to the arrangement, Bell Laboratories designed the radar and Western Electric Laboratories manufactured the final equipment. By the time America entered World War II in December 1941, 
The development of radar technology has become the largest, single largest activity engaged in by Bell Laboratories. So that's what they did, radar, radar. And this link kind of gives you all of their, you know, experiments. They had their Tesla experiments in 1963, developing satellites. Nineteen twenty seven also marked Harold S. Black's first experiments in the field of negative feedback circuitry. Black eventually proved the principles that gave rise to negative feedback amplifier, one of the most important discoveries in the communications field. The practically the practical application of these principles resulted in the design and success of long distance multi channel systems. Man, so you dig on what that can possibly mean multi-channel systems when we just talk about dimensions and you know being like different networks you know what i'm saying taking this research one step further hw bold investigated the problems of distortion and noise interference ah so now we're talking about the same interference So eventually they looked into the heavens and found it and said, oh no, it's coming from everywhere. And they amplified their their power 50,000 times over what they would normally need, which created a very powerful field. So that the 7.23 centimeter wavelength coming from everywhere would not interfere. Now in 1927, dealing with this negative feedback amplifier, H.W. Bold investigated the problems of distortion and noise interference, which were the consequences of using amplifiers for long distance telephone communication. So because they wanted their communication, you know, what I'm saying free of any, uh, you know, what I'm saying obviously, you know, signal or, you know, whatever the case is, you know, what I mean, that natural vibration, that natural flow, they're just calling it interference. They call you. They call your flow interference. Just know that. To them, it's all about interference. So, all right. So we're just talking the Bell Laboratory. So we have the Holman Dell Horn Antenna. Pull this up. The Holman Horn Antenna is a large microwave horn antenna. So this is what they were using to measure the sky. To see what this interference is all about. To see what this Hawaii is all about. So this horn antenna that was used as a radio telescope during the 1960s at Bell Telephone Laboratories in Home, Homedale Township, Monmouth County, New Jersey, the United States. United States, it was designated a National History Landmark in 1988 because of its association with the research work of two radio astronomers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson in 1965. While using this antenna, Penzias and Wilson discovered the microwave radio, microwave background radiation that permeates the universe. Also, oh, they just discovered something that permeates the universe. The microwave background radiation that permeates the universe. This was one of the most important discoveries in the physical cosmology since Edwin Hubble's demonstrated in 1920s that the universe was expanding it provided the evidence that confirmed George Gamow and and A George's Lemaitre's big bang theory All right, so they're trying to develop some to support their hijack theories obviously theory of creation so this is their oh it's an accidental fart an accidental dust of fart bang <laughs> And everything's expanding forever because of this accidental bang. All right, man. All right, man. So now that we're waking up to such silliness, description, the horn antenna at Bell Telephone Laboratories in Homedale, New Jersey, was constructed in 1959 to support Project Echo, 
The National Aeronautics and Space Administration's passive communication satellites which use large earth orbiting aluminized plastic balloons as reflectors to bounce radio signals from one point on the earth to another. The antenna is 50 feet in length with the radiating aperture or aperture of 20 by 20 feet, 6 by 6 meters and is constructed of aluminum. The antenna's elevation wheel, which surrounds the midsection of the horn, is 30 feet in diameter and supports the weight of the structure by means of rollers mounted on the base frame and axial or thrust loads are taken by a large ball bearing at the narrow apex end of the horn. The horn continues through this bearing into the equipment building or cab. The ability to locate receiver equipment at the horn apex, thus eliminating the noise con contribution of the connecting line, it is an important feature of the antenna. A radio or radi radiometer for measuring the intensity of radiant energy is located in the cab. So you got this drop. This is just basically what you know these scientists were doing, and you know, this is just some of the uh, some of the methodology of what they were using with this horn antenna. And you can look more into it. How is all this connecting? So when they turned up this large, fifty foot long antenna, here's a little picture over here. Something like this. It's like a horn, like a triangular, what did it say? The triangular base frame. So it's a triangular base frame. All right, so they're using that pyramid shit. Triangular base frame of the antenna is made for structural steel. It rotates wheels around the center. Now, this is this is back then, man. All right, this is in the 60s. All right? And they cranked this thing up 50,000 times then. Now, what are they doing now when they're saying, oh, we're just measuring the ionosphere. We're just checking it out. I mean, I thought you went to the moon. You're still measuring the ionosphere? But you don't know why uh, Antarctica is breaking apart. And, you know, you got all this green moss all over the place. Things are waking up. So we're just talking about Penzias and Wilson discover cosmic radio wave radiation 1965, just like we read. Bell Laboratories built a giant antenna all right, in Homedale, New Jersey, 1960. It was part of a very early satellite transmission system called ECHO. Make sure you can see all that. All right. I got y'all, man. I know y'all working, man. I know you're doing things, man. Let me just, you know, let me just talk on you right quick, man. We're just talking about uh, uh, synthetic grids. We're talking about waves. We're talking frequency, the signature, the image that is you. The so-called Negro today is original man. This is the old world. And the spell is over. The gig is up. Wakey, wakey. Turkey, eggs, and bakey. I mean, uh, eggs and turkey bakey. I mean, you, know, you can do it your way. Do it your way. Or, hey, man, just get your fast on, man. Get your fast on, man. All right, so by collecting and amplifying weak radio signals bounced off large metallic balloons high in the atmosphere, it could, be, it could send signals across long distances within a few week, few years. The test Telstar satellite was long. Here's the satellite. Here's the antenna. Here's the Telstar satellite. It had built-in transponders that made the ecosystem obsolete. Meanwhile, two employees of Bell Laboratories had their eye on the antenna. Arnold Penzias. A German-born radio astronomer joined Bell Laboratories in 1958. He had done his Ph.D. on using Masser's microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation to amplify and measure radio signals from the spaces between galaxies. He knew the Homedale antenna would, make, would also make a great radio telescope and was dying to use it to continue his observations, but he pursued other research while the antenna was booked for commercial use. Another radio astronomer came to Bell Laboratories in 1962 with the same idea. Robert Wilson had also used masters to amplify weak signals and mapping radio signals from the Milky Way. The, lar the launch of Telstar in 1962 gave both researchers what they wanted. The home Dell antenna was freed up for pure research. When they began to use it as a telescope, they found there was a background noise like static in the radio. This annoyance was a uniform signal, so they were annoyed by the noise, the breath. They were annoyed. Their annoyance was a uniform signal. They found a uniform signal everywhere, and they said, oh, no. Oh, no. 
They said, oh no, it's coming from everywhere. Hawa. So they amplified their power 50,000 times to create a synthetic workable grid to put you to sleep. When they begun to use it, this 50 feet long horn telescope, they found there was a background noise like static in a radio. This annoyance was a uniform signal in the microwave range. Seeming to come from all directions, everyone assumed it came from the telescope itself, which was not unusual. It hadn't inter interfered with the ecosystem, but Penn's eyes and Wilson had to get rid of it by making the observations they planned. They checked everything to rule out the source of the excess radiation. They pointed the antenna right at New York City. It wasn't urban interference. It wasn't radiation from our galaxy or extraterrestrial radio sources. It wasn't even the pigeons living in the big, in the big horn-shaped antenna. Penzias and Wilson kicked them out and swept out all their droppings. The source remained the same throughout four seasons. All year long, it was the same source. The source, the source, Hawa, the source. The creator remained the same. The source remained the same through four seasons, so it couldn't have come from the solar system or even from the, ni a ni the a 1962 above ground nuclear test because in a, in a year that fallout would have shown a decrease. They had no... They had to conclude it was not the machine. It was not random noise causing the radiation. <clears throat> They're always confused about you and your source. Penzias and Wilson began looking for theoretical explanations around the same time. Robert Deke or Dyke at nearby Princeton University had been pursuing theories about the Big Bang. All right, so now they're going to try to swoop it on in to this noise from the big bang it must be the explosion from the big bang all right so we're hijacked free so you got this lake man we're just talking about the source remain the same all year long they're calling it interference they're calling it static and they keep saying oh no oh no it's coming from everywhere oh no <laughs> oh man i'm gonna drop this quickly man I uh, mean, still got a little time, man. I'm going to take my time, man. You know what I'm saying? We're just talking energy. So we got to take our time. So, all right. This is a lifeharmonizer.name. We, we talked about that. Um, We're just talking frequency, energy, vibration. We're talking resonating with the frequency that they are running from. The frequency that they're saying, oh, no. Oh, no. It's coming from everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, man. The creator's everywhere. All right, so when you feel the press chant um many times and feel its powerful tone, tonic, because it is the infinite sound of creation, God, the creator, that can be heard in the tiny place in the sacred space of your heart. Of course it can be heard. They, they're they picking it up. They're picking it up everywhere they turn their, their uh, horned uh, antenna. And they say, oh, no. Oh, no, it's coming from everywhere. Yeah, so if it's coming from everywhere, then I'm sure if you are still enough, you will hear it in a tiny place of the sacred space in your heart. The chanting of Aum at A equals 432 hertz drives away all worldly thoughts and removes distraction. I'll say it again. We're getting all the substantiating drop. We're combining it with this 7.23 drop that they are measuring with their 50-foot horned antennas and saying, Oh, no. Oh, no. It's coming from everywhere. I mean, that's what they say. So the chanting of um at A equals 432 drives away all worldly thoughts and removes distraction. Those who chant Aum regularly absorb more life force energy and develop a stronger, sweeter voice. Those who meditate daily on the Aum develop more lustrous eyes and feel new vigor and strength. The Aum 
symbol is a sacred syllable representing Brahman, the impersonal, absolute, omnipotent, omnipresent, and the source of all manifesting existence. So, Dodge the Hijack, they're just talking about the Creator. They're talking about the all, the source of all. They may call it this, yada yada, call it that. We're getting the dropout because we know we're talking energy, frequency, and vibration. And you can hijack us when we're in energy, frequency, and vibration. We know we're in the Indias. We know we're in the Indias. Then we know we're always just talking about us and what they have abstracted from us in terms of energy. Because they want this super force. They want this vigor and strength. They want their distractions removed. They want the life force. The life force energy. But what is that? Hawa. So then they got the AUM. Creation, preservation, destruction, or dissolution. The three portions of Om relate to the states of walking, dream, and deep sleep. The arm sound at A equals 432 can be considered the sound of one's own heart and nervous system. I mean, you know. So you're talking your nervous system and heart having a sound, a frequency. And is it in the same sound as they're measuring? And they're measuring with their 50-foot antennas and saying, Oh no, it's coming from everywhere, boss. Boss, it's coming from everywhere, the plane. Oh no, the frequency is around me. Every time you get static, man, and, and, and static is revealed and exposed, they say, oh, no. Oh, shit, I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by the drop, the frequency, the purity, the presence, the creator. It's always been. 432, the arm sound at 432 can be considered the sound of one's own heart and nervous system. So you got meditators, mystics. They say mystics, meditators. Man, if you're still enough, you can hear, you can hear, you can listen, you can hear the sound. What wave are we in? What sound do we hear that makes us line up and link up and tribe up? Do you hear it daily? Do you meditate daily? On the sound, the frequency, the creator is sound with the Wisdom, the word, the sound, with the word, with the word, with the word, with the sound, you are created. You're in the vibration of this word, of this sound, like the sound made by an electrical transformer or a swarm of bees. When the world too strongly dominates our mind, this sound may for a time not be heard. But it returns as the mind becomes perfectly quiescent, quiescent, silent, still. Listen for this sound in your quietest moments. And you will learn to recognize it as a daily encounter with the divine, with the, with the creator. We don't get hijacked by the divine celestial. We connect with the vibration from the greater barrier, from beyond the greater light, from the formless from beyond time and space. We are formless in our frequency that lives within all creatures and all existence. The A equals 432 arm um, vibrates on the principles of the golden mean or phi. We're talking the spiral, the cochlea, the spiral, and unifies the properties of light, time, space, matter, what they're calling gravity or density and magnetism with biology, the DNA code and consciousness weight. So A equals four, three, two vibrates on the principles of the golden mean or five. Five mathematically is the creator. Five is the creator expressed in a mathematical form. Five. Why? Because it unifies the properties of light, time, space, matter, density, not gravity, and magnetism, electromagnetic field, with what? Biology, the DNA, code, and consciousness itself. That sounds like a marriage between the framer and the shaper. The natural tuning to A equals 432 
hurts has profound effects on your consciousness as well as the cellular levels of your body. Listen up. By tuning musical instruments and using the pitch A equals 432 hertz instead of the music industry's 440 hertz. Again, listen up. Why do you think we tune all our family's music? Anyone who asks for it, we tune five songs a month for free to tune up your library, not for our own sake, but so that you, so that you can vibrate and connect to your profound effects, whatever the profound effects that need to be had as you wake up and connect to the creator, you can have them. I know it sounds new and it sounds different and all this kind of stuff at first, but when you dig on it, man, we're only talking energy, frequency, and vibration, and we never have, uh, you know what I'm saying, dis been distracted from that. We never got distracted from the foundation that we're bringing you, man, energy, frequency, and vibra vibration. Vibration is law, is natural. So by tuning musical instruments and using the pitch A equals 432 hertz, instead of the music industry's 440 hertz, your atoms and DNA start to resonate in harmony with the phi spiral of nature. Oh, wow. The best way to experience the A equals 432 hertz difference is by listening. Its wavelength is 7.23. Wait. Because it seems that Bell Labs measured this same frequency back what, in, the, in the 30s, in the 20s, and said, oh no, oh no, boss, it's coming from everywhere. In order to get rid of what they called it, they called it static, man. So they did something that we as a nation and a planet are still suffering from. So we're suffering across the plane from some hijack they did. What did they do to avoid or over overweigh this static? They upped the power 50,000 times over what they would normally need, which created a very powerful field. So that the 7.23 centimeter wavelength coming from everywhere would not interfere. Again, by tuning music instruments and using the pitch A equals 432 hertz instead of the music industry's 440 hertz is what's been coming out of your radio since the 1950s, 1953 International Standards Organization made it a mandate in America <laughs> that everything you hear musically must be in this tune right here, 440 hertz. It must be in 440. But when you get it tuned back, when you let us tune it up, when you do it yourself, we've dropped on how you can do it yourself. So this is your frequency. You have it. It's yours for free. Your atoms and DNA start to resonate in harmony with the five spiral of nature of the creator of wow. The best way to experience A equals 432 hertz difference is by listening. Its wavelength is 7.23. Its wavelength is 7.23. So they found this frequency. They said, oh no. It's coming from everywhere. And it was 7.23. It is your, your creator, your sound, the sound of creation, the sound of your creator. And they upped their equipment 50,000 times to create a synthetic grid. Now, what did they do? Because now they're saying, oh, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, the measurement of, of, of a, a, a universal frequency is 7.35. You know, when you look at now, you're going to see a lot of 7.35s. You're not going to see a lot of 7.23s. It's not going to give you the drop. They're going to up it, and then they gave you their new version, 7.35, which is more connected to 440, whereas 432 hertz has a wavelength of 7.23, which is everything, which is you, which is the spiral, which is the creator. A equals 440 hertz pitch triggers also certain parts of the left hemisphere of our brain, the, the place where the ego and it's never resi never enough reside. So the 440 is specifically triggered to pull on your ego 
to feed your ego. And your ego is what separates you, which is why 440 hertz in the somatics experiments separates the sand, separates on the iron sheet. And in 432, it connects again to geometric patterns, what they're calling sacred geometry, which is just your creator's sound. So the ego and it's never enough resides. That's where 440 triggers. Listening to music at 440 makes us never feel fully satisfied with any recorded piece of music that we own in order to make sure that we will always buy more recorded music. Record labels record r record labels record music at the A equals 440 hertz pitch, the ultimate client retention tool. I'm not saying it to you. You're getting it from different substantiating research is breaking it down that your creator exists and you've been hijacked, whether we're talking about the indigenous truth, whether we're talking about uh, the flat earth or Giannini or isolated glo globular illusions and worlds beyond poles, whether we're talking energy, frequency, and vibration, whether we right there in the Torah and we, we, we're talking Psalms 83, we're talking Deuteronomy 28, whatever you want to see that you've been hijacked and why and now you see it even energetically that this 440 hertz is being pumped out specifically to feed your ego. The place where the ego and it's never enough reside. Listening to music at this pitch makes you feel, never feel fully satisfied. So you need more and they're using it for you to buy more and stream more. And you never feel satisfied because of the pitch, because of the, the, the trigger that's triggering your ego. It's triggering a place where the never enough resides. So you never have enough. That's the frequency war. And you being conscious and awakening is breaking the spell. A equals 432 hertz pitch is centered in the heart. Some people who are not able to distinguish the 8 hertz difference with the 440 with with A equals 440 hertz claim they can feel the A equals 432 hertz to be warmer due to longer wavelength within the universal harmonic concept, the natural and sacred breath of tone. A equals 432 is used for tuning consciousness. So we're talking about the sacred breath, the secure breath, the breath, the breath. Ah, wow, the breath. Ha, ha, ha. Look, reveal, breath, ha, wa. Secure, the secure breath, man. We were right back in that paleo. We're talking about that bit. What else we got, man? What else we got for you, man? Yeah, we're about to make our dismount, man. Just, uh. Dig on this right quick. This is a book called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. This is that Drunvalo Melchizedek cat that the spirit science dude keeps talking about. So, you know, you got some books and some drop in there, man, that, that we might be able to tie together with some things, you know, get some more babies out. This is the, the dimensional. We're talking about the wavelength determines dimension. Wavelength determines dimension. So you keep hearing about a wave being longer or shorter. All right, so let's go. The dimensional levels are nothing but differing base rate wavelengths. The only difference between this dimension and others, any other, is the length of its base, basic waveform. So we got that before. It's just like a tele, television or radio set. When you turn on the dial, you pick up a different wavelength. Then you get a different image on your TV screen or a different station on your radio. It's exactly the same for dimensional levels. If you were to change the wavelength of your consciousness, and in so doing, in so doing, change all your body patterns to a wavelength different from this universe. You would literally disappear out of this world and reappear in the one to which you were tuned. Tuning up, choosing up. This is exactly what the UFOs do when you see them shooting across the sky. If you've ever seen one, they shoot across at unbelievable speeds. They make 90 degree turn and disappear. The people on board these ships are not being carried through space like we are on an airplane. Spaceship passengers are consciously connected psych psychically to the vehicle itself. Man. 
right? So when they when they're ready to go into another world, they go into meditation and link all aspects of themselves into oneness. Then they make either a 90 degree shift or two 45 degree shifts all at once in their minds, actually taking the whole ship along with its passengers into another dimension, this universe. And by that, I mean all the stars and atoms going infinitely out and infinitely in forever has a base wavelength of about 7.23 centimeters. Here we go again. You could pick any spot in this room and go infinitely in or infinitely out forever within a particular universe. All right. Let me skip down a little bit. So now we get back into it was Bell Laboratories that discovered this wavelength, not some spiritual person sitting in the cave somewhere. So we got some of this information. <laughs> and again, eventually they looked into the heavens and found it and said, Oh no, boss, it's coming from everywhere. They upped the power 50,000 times. So all right, so that's this must be the source of, you know, all that drive that we were getting a lot of it, man. So you got all this, man, and, you know, you got a lot more that you can dig into. Definitely want to get down here a little bit, a little bit. The wall between octaves, because we haven't got on this yet. All right, the wall between octaves. Between each whole note universe and between each subspace or overtone universe, there is nothing, no thing, absolutely zip. Each of these spaces is called a void. The void between each dimension is called a duat by the Egyptians or a bar bardo by Tibetans. Each time you pass from one dimension or overtone into the next, you pass through a void or blackness that's in between. But certain voids are blacker than others. So this is how they had to you know, do all their thought traveling. This is how thought was, you know, doing all the stuff he was talking about in the Emerald Tablets, cycle to cycle and, and how to move and escape the hounds of the barrier. Because if you got too close to the barrier, they sniffed him out and let out a bell cry that could be heard from cycle to cycle. Then he started running from them. Who is he running from and what barrier are they protecting? That is up to you. But certain voids are blacker than others, and the blackest of these exist between the octaves. They are more powerful than the voids that exist within an octave. What does it mean? Please understand that we are using words that cannot fully explain this concept. The void that exists between octaves can be called the great void or the wall. It's like a wall you have to pass through to get to a higher octave. God or the creator put these voids there in a particular way for certain reasons. That will soon become apparent. Hmm. All these dimensions are superimposed over each other. And every point in space time contains them all. The doorway to any of them is anywhere. That makes it convenient. But, or you don't have to go looking for it. You, you just have to know how to access it. Although there are certain sacred places in the geometries of our of our reality here on earth where it's easier to become aware of the various dimensions and overtones sacred sites which are nodal not points connected to the earth and the heavens we'll also talk about them later there are also specific places in space that are tied to the geometries of space these places are sometimes referred to by explorers as stargates opening to another dimensional le other dimensional levels where it's easier to get through but in truth, you can be anywhere to go anywhere. It really doesn't matter where you are if you truly understand the dimensions and, of course, are capable of divine love. We're talking frequency. And they got this drop on changing dimensions, man, and all that, man. So, uh, man, then they got the tetrahedron drop. The star tetrahedron with Leonardo's image. That's that, uh, like I said, that, uh, that, uh, What's that joint called? The uh, Da Vinci, uh, Da Vinci Code. You know what I mean? Go check that out again, man. Cause always got some dropping those. It's going to become one of the most important drawings for his work. What you're looking at is a two dimension. Is two dimensional, but think of it in, in three dimensions. A star tetrahedron, just as shown here, happens to exist around each human body. We're talking Merkaba. We're going to spend a great deal of time to get you to the point where you can see that you do have this image around your body. Notice especially 
that there is a tube running down the center of the body through which we can breathe life force energy. Alright, so you hear about the star David, you hear about, you know, a lot of the hijacked stars and frequencies and all that, but we're talking geometric patterns and geometric, you know what I'm saying, energy. And when you look at a crystal and a crystal being formed, it makes this same star, so it's a natural form when you deal with energy, but you can put different intentions on it. And you can have a positive frequency come out of this symbol or a negative one. But either way, you know, we're not functioning in symbology. We're just talking about energy, frequency, and vibration. And right here, we're talking about the breath to breathe the life force energy. We're talking breath. We're talking breathing. We're talking ha wa. We're talking energy. And we're talking your natural energy before the synthetic grids were put on top of you. We're talking about a tube running down the center of the body through which we can breathe life force energy. And the two apexes at the top and bottom of this tube connect the three the third dimension to the fourth dimension you can inhale fourth dimensional prana directly through the two you could be in a vacuum a total void with no air to breathe and completely survive if you could live the principles of this understanding <sighs> what does it mean and what is the drop well you know spirit science man said they had to drop man in, in this human history movie and we're just talking consciousness grids, and we saw this before, but just to get, you know, a few minutes of this conscious grid thing, you know, just just with all the drop that we got with the radio antenna, we know they umped this thing up 50,000 times. We know they saw it, and they said, oh, no, it's coming from everywhere, boss. What's this energy? All right, so it's not the first time. You know, here it's going to talk about Thoth. It's going to keep calling it a, a Christ conscious grid. We're just talking about a Mashiach grid, a salvation grid, an, an energy grid. Now, which one? Because Thoth has a spell barrier, and it seems again in the 60s and the 20s and 30s, they were creating another spell barrier where they were pumping out, you know what I'm saying, 50,000 times to overcome what they're calling interference. And now they're doing chemtrails to block the interference coming in all the way, the UV rays, the ultra high vibration tuning you up they've tried everything to hijack you so what did Thoth do let go if we didn't we would not survive this has never happened before in the universe ever Thoth who was the priest king of Atlantis at the time priest king of Atlantis so again these are different priest kings everyone wants to be priest king everyone wants the Khan huh everyone wants the Khan everyone wants to be priest let's go learned that they would have to perform this experiment on themselves. They received instructions from the highest levels of life and they went on their way. Thoth proceeded with a being named Ra and Aragat who were previous- Thoth, Ra, and Aragat? Alright, so that's their little, uh, you know, hijack city. Now they're gonna act like they're doing something victorious for all of mankind. But what are they really doing? They're running their ass off from the hounds of the barrier. They're trying to uh, block out the interference. Oh no, trust us, we're doing something righteous. We're blocking out the creator. We're, we're doing a synthetic grid just for you. Kings of Atlantis and began the experiment. To understand what they did, we have to talk about consciousness grids. A planetary grid is an etheric crystalline structure that envelops the planet and holds the consciousness of any one species of life. This grid does have an electromagnetic component associated with the third dimension, but it also has a component for every dimension as well. These grids are geometric, of course, and science will eventually discover that there is a grid for every species in the world. Each of these grids have their own geometry and are unique. There's not another one like it, just as the species itself are unique. These grids give off light as well, and from space they can be seen as the source of the bluish glow around the Earth. What Thoth and friends had to do was create a synthetic Christ consciousness grid, allowing humans to ascend to the Christ consciousness Whoa, don't speak so fast, fast-talking little man. So Thoth created a, a Christ conscious grid to allow humans to ascend to Christ consciousness. Does it sound like Hijack 101? Does it sound like they're creating their own celestial heavens? And can you tie this, this into the OSB with Louis Mong and all of them having their own heavens and all these entities, all these fallen angel entities that are being worshipped have their own heavens and did they create their own heavens and their own synthetic grid that they set up 
with these pyramids and so-called sacred sites. Hear it again, my people, because you just got the drop on the radio antenna on what they're calling static and interference. So does this grid protect the 7.23 or is it projecting another frequency? Does your creator's plane of existence, you're not on a ball spinning, you're not on a ball spinning. Africa's not bending over and your 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 water's not bending. You never seen water bend into a ball before in a vacuum called space while spinning on a wobble, right? So don't believe the hijack. So this this plane is being hijacked. You know about thought spell barrier. So let's go. In a very short time. But first, let's talk about was the priest king of Atlantis at the time learned that they would have to perform this experiment on themselves. They received instructions from the highest levels of life and they went on their way. They received instructions from the highest levels of life, not the creator, the dweller, who they call the morning star, right? We're only talking Ra. Come on, man. So they received instructions from their superiors to build an artificial grid, so-called Negro. Does this have anything to do with your hijack? And what are they continuing on with these experiments like Bell Laboratories? I mean, how would you ever even know about this shit if we're not digging on it together? That this experimentation was the continuance of what they're calling their Christ consciousness. And in that frequency, like Papal Bull, Dumb Diverses, enemies of Christ, enemies of their Christ conscious grid, they came here to hijack you who are enemies of their artificial synthetic shit. Both proceeded with a being named Ra and Aragat, who were previous kings of Atlantis, and began the experiment. To understand what they did, we have to talk about consciousness grids. A planetary grid is an etheric crystalline structure that envelops the planet and holds the consciousness of any one species of life. This grid does have an electromagnetic component associated with the third dimension, but it also has a component for every dimension as well. These grids are geometric, of course, and science will eventually discover that there is a grid for every species in the world. Each of these grids have their own geometry and are unique. There's not another one like it, just as the species itself are unique. These grids give off light as well, and from space they can be seen as the source of the bluish glow around the Earth. What Thoth and friends had to do was create a synthetic Christ consciousness grid, allowing humans to ascend to Christ consciousness in a very short time. Oh, we needed a shortcut? They needed a shortcut? Did they open up too many dimensional tears? Had to repair some shit? Why did they need a shortcut? Well, you know, you go back, I'll leave the link, you put it together. But it pretty much went hand in hand with everything that Prince Uriel Bay was kicking in that Moabite series, man. Get all seven or eight parts of that. Because we tied all this together beautifully in their concept of a Maxim. Let's go. But first, let's talk about the science behind the grid. Perhaps you've heard of the 100th monkey experiment. Over a span of 30 years. Yes, they're going to refer to you as monkeys in the process of explaining this shit. Let's go. Scientists were researching a species of monkey called Makaka Fuscata on an island in Japan. They were providing the monkeys with sweet potatoes by dropping them in the sand. The monkeys liked sweet potatoes, but they didn't like the sand and dirt so much. A few monkey children figured out that they could wash their sweet potatoes, and some of them taught the technique to their parents. Only a few of the adult monkeys did this, though. This went on for some time, until one day, the monkeys who actually knew the technique hit critical mass. And bingo! The technique started spreading faster than it did before. Monkeys started learning it really easily across all of the Japanese islands nearby as well as on the mainland. They knew that there had to be something that wasn't yet understood about how a species is connected to it. Hmm, how are these Negroes connected? One learns some drop, and then it's easier for someone else to pick up some drop. And then somebody else picks up some drop, and then it's somehow consciously easier to grasp the reality. Yes, they're calling you monkeys. Look at them. Do they look like monkeys or Negroes? Monkeys or Negroes? Let's go. Itself. So what did we do? We tried it on humans. A research team made a picture out of human faces. About a hundred faces hidden within a single picture. But at first glance, you could only see about six or seven. They did several surveys with a few hundred people in Australia and said, all right, find the faces. Most people could only pick out six, seven, eight, nine or so. Not many more. After that, the research team went to Britain and aired the picture on a closed cable BBC special that was shown only in England. They showed where all of the faces were, every last one. Half of the research team, which stayed in Australia, did the experiment again with new subjects. And lo and behold, people were just naturally able to see more faces. 
After this experiment, they knew that something definitely connects us all, and the field of noetics is learning more about it daily. It's mass consciousness. In Lesson 11, I showed you the three levels of consciousness. Each of these levels have their own consciousness grids around the planet, and our second level grid is based on squares and triangles. Many governments of the world, especially the Russian and US governments, were studying our grids back in the 60s and probably earlier. Oh, they kind of gave some drive just now. All right. Definitely connects us all, and the field of noetics is learning more about it daily. It's mass consciousness. In Lesson 11, I showed you the three levels of consciousness. Each of these levels have their own consciousness grids around the planet, and our second level grid is based on squares and triangles. Our second level grid is based on squares and triangles. Are they speaking of their illusion? It's based on squares and triangles. Circle the square, square the circle. Very interesting. Many governments of the world, especially the Russian and US governments, were studying our grids back in the 60s and probably earlier. When mapping out the grid on the planet, you find little military bases on many of the nodal points of the grid. There are tons of these bases way out in the middle of nowhere, like on little islands like Guam. This couldn't be a coincidence that these government powers placed their bases right where the little spirals came out of the So the governments did a confederacy, Psalms 83, just like the Antarctic Treaty that's never been broke. No matter how many wars, this treaty would never be broke. Because they do not want your ass knowing what's beyond the ice. They don't want you having the perspective that you're Middle Earth. And that there's a lot more Earth. A lot more terraforming. And yeah. Yeah, man. Listen up. Levels ...have their own consciousness grids around the planet. And our second level grid is based on squares and triangles. Many governments of the world, especially the Russian and US governments, were studying our grids back in the 60s and probably earlier. When mapping out the grid on the planet, you find little military bases on many of the nodal points of the grid. There are tons of these bases way out in the middle of nowhere, like on little islands like Guam. This couldn't be a coincidence that these government powers placed their bases right where the little spirals came out of the grid. Hmm. They were trying to take control of the grid, because if you control consciousness, you control what we think and feel. If you control the grid, you control what we think and feel, and it's ball game. If we control consciousness, we control what they think and feel, and it's body bag, Daniel. So who's going to control this thing, man? It's tug of war, tug of war, it's a frequency war. Either you control them or they control you. Of course, there was another organization that had its hand in both of these governments, and still do, and we will discuss them soon enough. Uh -oh. This grid is visible through astral projection as well. 13,000 years ago, it began. Thoth, Ra, and Aragat were to create a global complex that was able to build a synthetic Christ consciousness grid over a 13,000-year time period. The first thing they did was to fly to a place which is now called the Giza Plateau, but back then it was known as the land of Chem. Oh man, so they went to Chem. They went to Chem. ...that a Christ consciousness grid over a 13,000 year time period. The first thing they did was to fly to a place which is now called the Giza Plateau, but back then it was known as the land of... They went to Chem at Ham. They left Atlantis because it was sinking here in America and they set up shop in Kimmy. Set up shop. Thoth said he put the slave vibration on the hairy barbarians. Now he's going to refer to the Emerald Tablets and I refer to them quite often. Because with the proper lens you can belly flop and Barry Sanders the hijack all at the same time. So because they're coming here, that means that they were not initially from here. They came here and they put a slave vibration on the hairy barbarian people here. And they started creating shit. Ahem. It was also a rainforest back then as well, not desert like it is today. Hmm. First, they created a grid around the planet fourth dimensionally and then began to construct it in the physical third dimension. They went to the male energetic axis of the earth and constructed a complex which today is called the Solar Cross. These men were six dimensional beings at that time and were living at a very high level of consciousness. So whatever they thought happened instantly. Bang. It was that simple. According to Thoth, he built the Great Pyramid, not the Egyptian king Cheops. <laughs> Thoth says that it was built 200 years prior to the pole shift and built very quickly. These pyramids were aligned precisely with both Fibonacci and golden mean spirals emanating from out of the solar cross. Interestingly enough, Edgar Cayce also channeled that the pyramids were constructed in this time. The pyramids were also found to be built from the top down the stones on top were placed first, which has baffled researchers ever since. Every time more is learned about the pyramids, we move further into dark on understanding how they were formed. If what Thoth says is true, well, that explains everything. 
From there, foes and friends constructed an entire network of mm. temples and structures along mm. this grid fourth dimensionally, placing mm. them on nodes on the new synthetic Christ consciousness grid they were creating. Mm. All of them were made with Fibonacci or golden mean spirals, and all of them were mathematically referred back to the solar cross in Egypt through the Great Pyramid. The creation of all of the sacred sites on the planet were no accident. It was a single consciousness that created them all. A single consciousness that created them all. A single consciousness that ran from the angels of the barrier that protected the most highest greater light. A single consciousness that is Hijack 101. From Machu Picchu to Stonehenge to Zaghuan, you name it. There are a few exceptions, but most were created by a single awareness as part of a unity consciousness grid. That's why all of them are desolate now. All of them are laid to waste. Although the Great Pyramid was done all at once, many of these ancient structures of the world were made fourth dimensionally and slowly dropped in frequency until they manifested on the third dimension over a long period of time. Richard Hoagland's research brings this forward, but he wasn't the first either. They showed how one sacred site is extrapolated from another, to another, to another. A hot topic of discussion right now are ley lines. These are simply geometric relations between sacred sites. Archaeologists are now finding these huge connections between major spiritual sites in the globe, and now we know why they're connected. These sites had to be built physically so that the Christ Consciousness Grid could manifest. In a way, think of the physical sites as the wiring of a giant wireless electrical system, and then it needs about 13,000 years of continuous energy flow for it to actually turn on. Bang. Synthetic Grid. Synthetic Consciousness. Matrix. Hijack. 101. And just so that you're not left in suspense, Yes, the grid was completed. It came to life and is now active, though not really used. Not, it's active but not used. It's active but not used. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Man, we're just talking spirit science, man. Let's get a little bit more of this, man. Congratulations, Earth. We actually survived. Not only has Thoth told us this in person, but he's also written it down in the Emerald Tablet. Now they want you to think that, oh, you survived something. That the creator didn't save you it was Thoth and Ra in the game. Now we're talking the same Irmo tablets that we've been dropping on where Thoth says he has to run from the greater light. But that consciousness that runs from your creator now creates a synthetic energy grid and says congratulations I saved you. These tablets were left in the Great Pyramid thousands of years ago. There are 12 tablets in total formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and corrosion. Their atomic structure is fixed in place, and no change can ever take place. It so this is these emerald tablets. They're indestructible. In that respect, they violate the material laws of ionization. Wow. These tablets share a great wisdom, and you can read them at over a hundred different levels of consciousness, and you will always understand them differently. If you're interested in this stuff, you should definitely consider reading them. Alright, man. Well, you know what I'm saying? We'll serve the wave a uh, 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 little creepy man. But yeah, man. False, artificial, Merkaba, synthetic grids. They're calling Christ consciousness for a reason because it's Christos and Christos is their god of war. So this was a war, a frequency war of consciousness on you. And I'll leave this link, man, for the dismount. I'll leave this link for the dismount. Actually, man, you know what I want to do? You know what I want to do for the dismounts, man? Let's, let's get into the job library for the dismount, man. Everyone is surfing the wave, man. I got a long way to go with this site, man. But, you know, if y'all just been checking it out a little bit, man, digging on, uh, at least the library is up. You know what I'm saying? We'll get the blog going real soon. And, you know, you can just dig on it at your own pace, man. Um, anytime you're here, man, you can click this pop-up right here. You click the pop-up shop, man. You know what I mean? That's our pop-up shop. And you can always support, man. The store will pop up, man. We, uh, you know, digging with this Etsy, this Etsy, Etsy.com. Yeah, man, you click the pop up and you can, uh, you know, dig on it, man. We got the shirt up right there for you. So, you know, again, man, we're back, we're back. And it's easy for you to support us, man. And you can do this, cop as many as you want, put the sizes and all that stuff. And any issues and any, anything specific, man, hit us up, music at 432thedrop.com. You can rock the drop, man, right up, right up our pop-up shop. So whatever the new drop is, new slogan, new shirt coming out, whatever we're dropping, we'll come out the pop-up shop. You can always hit the drop shop. And again, man, we're going to get Paco Cedar Oil in here real soon. You can get that Drop Nation custom, man. If they can't tell us who we are, how can they tell us who we're not, man? We're just talking Drop Nation, man. We're just talking Drop Nation, man. 
So all that's there, man. But we're going to drop live very May. And much love to all y'all, man, who's been just dropping these beautiful PDFs for a while. We've been digging on all this stuff together, man. And we're making our dismount. Now that's some drop, man. If y'all listen to the, uh, if y'all y'all dig on the, on the listening parties, man. I like to play, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the album is. Last time we had that Lupe Fiasco. And while we do that, man, I put up some PDFs, man. I just kind of put them up on the screen for those that are able to uh, dig on it. It's cool, man, if you just want to vibrate. But when you check on it again, at least, uh, you know, pay attention to what we're dropping. Because I try to put some drive up there for my people, for my party people, man. So listen to party. So this is your drop, drop library, man. 130 PDFs. Again, I gave the password out for everyone who's... Uh, just wanting to dig on it right away. Subscribe, subscribe, get at us. Right on the website. As soon as you get there, you can uh, you know, join Drop Nation VIP for free. And we'll make sure you always have the password to the library because it will change from time to time. Man, where's this uh, JJ Hertech drop? Let's see if we can pull it up right quick. As you can see. A lot of real dope drop, man. Nah, 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 nah. Let's get this one right here. I'll leave this link, man. The Book of Knowledge, Secret Keys of Enoch. And we just, you know, pulled this up, man, one time. And once we did, man, it got so real. It got so real so fast, man. See if we can get it bigger. All right. There we go. There we go. So we keep hearing about this Messiah or Redeemer. We're just going to get it from here. We're just digging on energy, frequency, and vibration. Energy, frequency, and vibration. Oh, man. All right, man. Oh, some good stuff. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. So it says, therefore, grasp not at the spiritual inversions of light into matter, life into death, but awaken your vision with the light and love and grace of humanity before the magnificent and beneficial one of eternal peace. The second key is saying that the creative mind exists not as Lord, Adonai, but as King. So the creative mind exists Exists not only as quote unquote Lord or Adonai, but as King, the creative mind, your collective mind, your mind that's in a natural grid of connectivity is your King, Melech, as a Redeemer, Messiah, your collective mind, so called Negro, original seeds. You're in a grid of consciousness, you've been hijacked. They've created synthetic grids on you to keep you sleep. But when you are awake, your collective mind is Malek, is Mashiach. This means that the mind itself does not have to become incarnate to in order to act as king or redeemer. It doesn't have to become incarnate to act as a king or redeemer. The mind can stay where it is and program the redeemer. Damn! Your Negro mind can stay where it is and program the Redeemer, Messiah, into any teacher of light. The mind can stay where it is and program into any master, such as <laughs> Dodge the Hijack, Osiris, right? David, Jataka, the kingship of YHWH, the creator's sovereign energies. This is what we're getting when we talk about the drop. We're talking about the creator mind. Oh, dodge the Ohio Osiris Thoth drop. 
we're getting the dropout. The mind can stay where it is and program the quote unquote Lord Adonai into many universes, into many galaxies, into many life, life stations, king, quote unquote king. Melek is sovereign over all powers, principalities, and, gal and galactic universes of the Ophanim and the Benai Elohim and the Hiyas Ha Kodesh. We're talking about the Ruach, the energy, the spirit that are beyond our level of intelligence. The higher orders of intelligence understand that the Messiah, the higher levels of intelligence understand that the Messiah is where the redemptive energies of the body of light are manifested. The Messiah is where the redemptive energies of the body of light are manifested when they are manifested within you, so-called Negro, copper color race. You are a part of the collective Messiah collectively. They try to give you an abstract version, but you are it collectively. You are a part of the collective Messiah, so-called Negro. The collective Messiah unifies not only the 144,000 ascended masters that this physical universe is familiar with, but all physical universes that interpenetrate, inter, interpenetrate this physical plane and that beyond and those beyond on other frequencies of light. So not only all those in this plane, but all across all the plane are are, 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 are feeling this man they, they surf in this wave with you but all physical universes that interpenetrate this physical plane and those beyond on other frequencies of light they all are feeling your wave your collective messiah who are to see then who are to see then if man is to work with the creative mind he must comprehend the creative creative mind as something beyond the anthropomorphic anthropomorphic image of three-dimensional god form you gotta go beyond this 3d even beyond the light form of adam kadmon even beyond the messianic form of melchizedek the creative mind the creative mind your negro mind is hawa who they call eya asher eya hawa I am existence. I am that I am. I shall be what I shall be. A constant evolving, a constant remaking of every order of creation. If we are to participate in the ongoing biocosmic evolution of continuity and change within the creative con continuum of higher evolution, we must release ourselves from all vain endeavors in order to quicken the establishment of Hawa is here, we must release vanity, release our ego to quicken our collective mind or Mashiach, Hawa, to establish our Hawa, to quicken the establishment of our foundation, Hawa. And we're only talking about the drop. So thank you guys for surfing the wave again. You come here, man, you come get that drop. And as soon as you get there, there's a subscribe button. You subscribe for free to Tribe Nation VIP. Love to Hawa Stew. Love to the tribe. Just dropping a drop in real time. Lighting a few campfires, man. In real time, man. And just doing what we do in real time. Hawa, Hawa, Israel. You got the drop. We got the drop. We are the collective mind. We are Drop Nation.